प्रणाम और नमस्कार और ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई वेलकम यू टू आवर फर्स्ट मीटिंग फॉर 2024 आई होप दैट यू ऑल हैड अ गुड 2023 एंड यू विल कंटिन्यू टू प्रोग्रेस एंड अबव ऑल बी इन सेल्फ अवॉइडेंस and uh, break this uh, cycle of uh, you know personal rebirths uh, which basically is the uh, topic uh, which we are going to talk upon so uh, the title of uh, today's uh, topic is uh, our aura and the cycle of uh, rebirths so it's it's interesting because your aura is actually connected to your cycles of uh, rebirth Uh, so i was just thinking about it uh, let's look at a few uh, examples uh, you know like when i have breakfast every morning i have this apple you know so i just uh, uh, picked it up i thought we'll start the satsang uh, with this so it's it's funny why i have taken the apple because you see when you slice the apple uh, naturally you will consume uh, whatever is there in it to be consumed but uh, this apple has got seeds in it right and uh, how wonderful and how beautiful nature is actually created that those seeds have got that uh, complete blueprint of the rebirth of a apple tree in them right uh, science yet is actually figuring out that what are the details that go into such a small seed and then there are many seeds there's not one seed when you cut it there'll be at least uh, you know maybe 7 8 or 10 seeds right uh, now if you plant them what happens again you get a tree and the interesting thing is this that each tree when it really blossoms will uh, bear many 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 fruits right and then each of that fruit each of that apple again has got many seeds so it just seems to be multiplying right so just like this apple has got this seed in it which has got the blueprint to regrow similarly you see somewhere in the human being when you leave your physical body there is a blueprint right and what happens is what i'm actually telling you is not really anything new you know we have had uh, many lives i mean one question was once asked uh, sorry i just speak ex tempo you know i haven't i don't prepare anything so we go with the flow so you know once this question was asked uh, oh, how many lives have you had before and the answer to that was given well how many stars are there in the sky you know so heart will actually count right so now now look at this from another perspective you see sometimes uh, when it's uh, very hot uh, you know and you are tired in the afternoons you take a nap even if you take a nap for 15 or 20 minutes and say you fall asleep during that period everything is forgotten right but just look at it when you wake up from your memory everything is recollected and you exactly continue from where you left i mean just okay let's let's take this a little bit deeper reflect on this everybody went to sleep yesterday night right now yesterday night you slept and then in the morning you get up so during whatever you were doing actually yesterday is basically actually gone and then the thing is this you went into dreams you went to another world and then you went to sleep and in the morning when you woke up everything is recollected isn't it you don't actually really forget uh, whatever you were doing yesterday and you carry on with the actions uh, of actually today so the sages have actually described this as a mini death and rebirth this deep sleep you see when you start looking around you will actually find similarities and answers to what goes on and this blueprint that i'm actually going to unfold in front of you basically it is inherent in your subconscious right uh, the only problem is uh, uh, you know a good example which comes to my mind is that it's very difficult to recollect that 12 days ago during the lunch time 
what particular lunch did you have, right? For two years, say on the 2nd of March, or today is say the 4th of February, two years ago on 4th of February, what did you eat for breakfast? We don't know, it's forgotten, but it's there in the subconscious. Somewhere it is actually uh, recorded. So similarly, you see what happens is that when actually you are reborn, then at this physical level, the past is forgotten. It goes and sits in the subconscious and you just uh, uh, continue uh, with your normal day-to-day uh, -day life. Uh, one, one very beautiful example that actually nature gives in relation to this is uh, the example of a spider. You know, a spider basically lives for uh, roughly about two months and it can make at the most uh, three webs. And what it does is it will make one web, spend a week and a half, two weeks in that, go to another place, make another web, right? Forget about that, go another one meter away, build another web. And uh, by that time, the amount of web, the material that it has in its uh, body is finished and it actually dies. So similarly, uh, this is probably one of the most striking examples in uh, nature for us to remind about uh, uh, the cycle of uh, reincarnation. Uh, you see, we also build a web like in our last life. We have, we have led a life. We have been born actually somewhere. That's like one web we built. And then we completely forgot about it. And here we are uh, reborn in another body, whether in Sydney or in Bombay. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, repeating what we did in the previous life, right? And the thing is that you see the, the karma, the personal karma or the fuel is basically just like that spider was, you know, taking out that web from within it. Similarly, aren't we also creating karma uh, by our activities all the time. And then, you know, there is another question which actually arises here. Uh, sorry, I'm just going wavered everywhere. Uh, another question which arises is that uh, how do we uh, continue to flow along the course of our destiny? They talk that uh, we are controlled by the planets, the stars and astrology and so on. Yes, that is correct. Uh, but uh, the main culprit is the personality itself, isn't it? Look at this very carefully, right? You see, we uh, we actually have a constant flow of a certain fuel and that is even flowing now. You see, you are only sitting here and listening to this uh, uh, spiritual discussion because that's the thought which came in your mind. That is the desire that you have and that has resulted in this karma of uh, watching this uh, uh, spiritual meeting, correct? So the fuel of your destiny is actually in you only. It is your thoughts and your thoughts are connected with emotions and the emotions are connected with activity. And, uh, and you see, you can't lie yourself to this because this is what you've done right from the uh, your, your present birth to up to the present day, right? So uh, you cannot actually escape that. But then, you see, the question arises is that how do we free ourselves from all this? If you look within yourself, you have got a twofold nature. One is that consciousness, which is which is conscious or observes all these things. And the other is this lower nature, which actually is going through this cycle of uh, uh, death and uh, rebirth. So if you shift to your higher nature, if you are simply just uh, a silent observer, of course, you see, uh, witnessing or being conscious is going on all the time. You know, you cannot make any effort actually uh, to do that. All that you can do is you can only tune into its presence. And if you function from a higher level, from the level of consciousness, basically you are actually free from this uh, cycle of birth and death. Anyway, that's getting off the course of this uh, topic. So, uh, first of all, let, let's look at this aura. You know, uh, everyone actually talks a lot about the aura. Now, don't forget that uh, everyone experiences the flow of thoughts, right? And everyone experiences the flow of emotions. Even when you become illuminated and enlightened, even when you attain freedom from thoughts and feelings, it doesn't mean thoughts and feelings 
and activity will not go on. It will actually go on. The only difference is that it doesn't affect you anymore. You see, that is the freedom which is attained in that state of illumination. But you really need to think about this, you see. Where do the thoughts come from? They don't jump from the sky, right? <laughs> Sorry to use that terminology. Where do the emotions come from? They don't come, uh, you know, from the person sitting next to you. They don't come from the people when you're walking in a crowd. The thoughts and the feelings are basically flowing from within you. So, you know, these are some of the basic things that a spiritual aspirant has to answer for himself and actually know before he will progress on to uh, really what you call as the state of illumination. And mind you that all these sages have actually gone through all this. And that is why they are actually, you know, when they are born uh, Rama Krishna or Jesus or Vivekananda or Ramna Maharishi, that's why they are actually free of all these things. And they don't really participate, uh, you know, in the normal day-to-day -day activities, how ordinary human beings will participate, grow up, get a degree, get married, have children, you know, look after your kids, look after your husband, look after your wife then time comes and you just leave the physical body and you're actually gone. No, they just actually are centered and they actually teach you that in addition to performing all your day-to-day -day duties, how you can carry on with your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so I was just getting back to the all. You see, the, you, you know, you stretch your arms. Now, when you stretch your arms, my naturally it's the arms are actually going out. So, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll stretch them forward. So when you stretch your arms, you see, and you draw like an oval all around you, that basically is your aura. So you're not just simply this uh, physical body. That is really who you are. And in this aura are actually the sources of your thoughts, feelings, consciousness, and so on, which uh, we will actually discuss. But before I go on to that, uh, let's just look at two higher planes which are uh, described in our scriptures uh, that is the first plane or what we call as the Adi plane which is a very big plane of actually consciousness right so from this plane they say uh, Madam Bletvesky from the Theosophical Society gave a figure of 65 billion but uh, I'll believe more accurately the figure given by Rishi Master Vyans Arduino, uh, that 60 billion is the figure. So they say that 60 billion droplets or sparks of this light actually have come down to the next plane, which uh, basically we call as the Anupadik plane in Sanskrit, or it is the plane without any disguise. So, you know, basically disguise means that uh, there are no... Uh, there is no what we call as a body of spirit or a body of intuition or, you know, thoughts or feelings or physical activity. That's basically what it means. It means all these disguises, just like you put on, you know, these clothes and you change them, uh, you know, every, uh, every day. Uh, these disguises are not there in these pure uh, droplets of consciousness, which are actually 60 billion in number. And you see, this is the number of human beings. There are actually 60 billion human spirits and they are scattered everywhere, you know, in the spiritual hierarchy uh, or the higher planes. Uh, out of that, at present on Earth, uh, I believe that there's only about uh, 7.6 billion present, right? So these droplets actually is uh, known as monad, in uh, theosophical literature or English. And then I did some research on it uh, in Sanskrit, they call it a kank. So basically a kank means that which is uh, not dependent on anything else for its own survival. Naturally consciousness is not dependent on anything for its uh, uh, survival. So basically that is uh, who you originally are. But, you know, the question arises is then, then why he actually come down and go through all this process? You see, the reason is that these monads are like a young 
baby which has actually been born and knows nothing of the world until that baby actually grows, you know, uh, becomes a, you know, a young child, a teenager, uh, you know, a student, uh, gets married, you know, has children, uh, becomes a father or a mother and then a grandfather. So the thing is, is that that child only accumulates the experiences of physical life as it grows from childhood to uh, old age, which is the case with every one of us, right? So, you know, if you really look at nature, all the answers are there in front of us. So similarly, this monad, or whatever originality is, is just like this newborn child. Right? It has no knowledge or experiences of the lower worlds. It doesn't have any uh, tools by means of which uh, it can have a body of spirit, uh, a body of intuition. Uh, it has no means of actually thinking or feeling or undertaking physical activity because all those things are actually not there. So there is this uh, process of uh, involution coming down right, and gaining all these experiences. And then over a large period of time, see, uh, Rishi Master Ben Satuno explained that so far we have spent 14.4 billion years here on Earth. And, uh, you know, many more times, maybe multiply by two or three is what more actually we will spend before finally we will return back to our original nature of that monad. But then we will have all these collected experiences of the lower planes and then basically what happens is we become the equivalent of these gods who are actually responsible for our creation and then we become co-creators for the next phase of evolution to take place right nine such evolutions have taken place and we are going to become what we call as uh, the 10th order in this maya or evolutionary process so interesting i'm just throwing in uh, some more facts, uh, deviating a little bit from, you know, our topic, but so that you can get a more clearer picture and you can understand. And one of the things you have got to keep in mind that there is no freedom for any human being, including these 60 billion, until everybody has actually stepped up and reached up to that level. And if you ask for the proof of that, you see, look at it. What is the need for a, a person like a evolved entity like Jesus uh, to come here on earth and, and then suffer on a cross, right? What is the need for a, a very evolved entity like uh, Ramna Maharishi to come here on earth and guide us? And then, uh, you know, he had sarcoma in the left arm and he passed out because of so much of suffering uh, due to that cancer which was actually spreading right so this actually gives you proof that even though you may be illuminated or enlightened you may move to a higher spiritual hierarchy you may not go through misery or suffering but then again all of them there is no escape from this they do return and the reason why they return is to help you know our brothers and sisters you know or other members of this family who are actually left back and this is reflected in our day-to-day -day life as well. Look, uh, if you look at the nucleus of a family, there's a husband, there's a wife, and they have children, correct? And they live in this small group. And uh, naturally, look how the mother cares for her children, how the father cares uh, about the children. But this is only at the microcosmic level. It's that same reflection coming from the universal level down to the individual level, right? So there are many, many examples like that. Anyway, now uh, getting back to the aura. So basically, when you stretch your arms, right? And and I'll I'll prove whatever I'm saying to you. Uh, this is not simply theory, right? These are communications. Uh, uh, some of the communications you're not really going to find in books uh, because these are direct transmissions uh, from the uh, spiritual hierarchy in my own uh, spiritual journey. So when you stretch your arms and you, if you build like a, a circle of light or an oval around your body, basically this is actually who you are, right? So this is actually the aura and this aura actually plays a very big role. 
slowly as we are actually going to progress, like uh, Rishi Master Ben Sarduno has said, at the moment, there are only five sensory organs which are developed in the human being. As time passes, uh, another seven are yet to develop, right? So we will have 12 sensory organs and we have got to progress till 50 sensory organs. Imagine a human body having 50 sensory organs and then the Rishi says, uh, Rishi Master Ben Sarduno says, many more are actually yet uh, which will develop, you know. So the thing is this, that we are only at that phase of our evolution where we can only just feel the presence of thoughts and feelings, but a time will actually come when actually you will be able to see these thoughts, see these feelings with the sensory organs that will actually develop because every feeling that comes into us, every desire that comes into us, every thought that comes into us, you see, in their own plane, it is a full bloom living entity like a human being, right? This is not uh, uh, something out of the blue that I'm actually telling you. This is what each one of us actually experiences, but it is just that some are more advanced and they are actually able to gain that knowledge and share with others, while others are uh, uh, making their way towards this realization. So uh, I hope that uh, so far uh, summarizing, I've just uh, talked a little bit about, uh, you know, how the cycle of reincarnation is there, what is the fuel that keeps us uh, along the course of our destiny, our thoughts and feelings. I've given you some very vivid examples of the uh, mango, the spider, uh, you know, so that actually you can correlate. But then above all, the thing is this, that you cannot deny that thoughts flow into you and feelings actually flow into you. And that is exactly where personal karma comes in. And that's exactly where the cycle of reincarnation, uh, you know, uh, comes into uh, functionality. Okay, so let us uh, just uh, study ourselves. I'll request uh, Rajiv ji to put up a picture uh, which I wanted to use uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, satsang. Can we have that? Uh, ah, yes, okay. So you see, yeah, that, that's quite uh, beautiful and it's quite clear actually on your uh, screen, right? Uh, I use this, uh, you know, I've used this for one of the videos for my normal satsangs uh, that I have. So you see, when you stretch your arms, that red color which is there, that is basically representing the physical body and where that purple oval is there, that basically represents how far your aura goes, right? Uh, if any, uh, any of you want to have a copy of this uh, photo, just text me and I'm more than happy to WhatsApp uh, uh, to you. You know, And I, I can also point out uh, certain chapters in the book uh, or sections that can be read uh, to gain this knowledge. Because if you don't uh, pull this knowledge out from your subconscious, just think that how actually are you going to really evolve? Uh, Ramna Maharishi, Rishi Master Bian Sarduno keep on talking about the heart, but relative to the physical body, where is the heart? Of course, the heart is the light of consciousness and it is actually everywhere. So you see the one in red is the physical body and around that about two centimeters, there is a white line going all around, which actually represents your etheric body or what we call as the pranic body, right? So in this pranic body are all the different uh, chakras or etheric centers. There are seven centers which then communicate with our higher bodies and that is how basically the human body actually functions. So now when you stretch your arms, uh, you see when this diagram was made, the Rishi actually made me make the actual color of these bodies. And what you see is the actual color of these bodies. So you know where your elbow is, uh, where the elbow is, there is this orange color all around. And this is uh, about uh, uh, 30 centimeters uh, on each side. So total that is about 60 centimeters, but it can vary. So it's about 10 
centimeters less from where your elbow is, where that uh, green circle is there. So this, uh, you know, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, this is your body of emotions, right? This is what we call as the astral body. And this uh, body of emotions is connected to the plane, what we call as the plane of emotions. I'll discuss that uh, a little bit more uh, going into this uh, discussion. Okay. So that is your astral body or the body of feelings or the body of desires or the body of emotions. And that is the source from where all your desires are actually flowing. And you see, one thing to actually note here is that we are not so much worried about the thoughts, uh, about consciousness and all that, but we are driven by desire, right? We are driven by our feelings. The reason is that you see that our body of feelings or the astral body connected to this huge plane of feelings is there next to our physical body. That is the reason. That is why it is not easy to transcend and be in self-abidance. That is why a lot of effort actually is required finally to be in that state of freedom or finally to be that silent, uh, changeless observer. Okay, so now we come to this. You will see that there is a green uh, body there where the elbow is and this green body is basically all around and it's about 15 centimeters in width. Uh, now it will vary according to the height of the person and whatever it is. So this is your mental body, right? This is the body of thoughts. This is connected to the plane of thoughts and though here actually uh, is shown is just a single body, but actually there are two bodies. There is a lower mental body. When you split that green part into two, there's a lower mental body and there is a higher mental body. I'll uh, I'll cover that uh, soon. You know, let's just first go through the bodies. So this is your lower nature mental body, which is where your elbow is, and then the astral body, and then this physical and etheric bodies. So this is the lower nature of human beings, which is constantly changing. Look, thoughts change. With thoughts, your feelings change. And along with that, your activity changes. You are very actually familiar with that. The more you become familiar with yourself, the more closer you will go to self-abidance and you will understand uh, you know it very very clearly you see it is not the question of actually sitting in meditation of hours and practicing for years and years and still uh, you know you find bliss only for some time the question is that you have the right knowledge you experiment with that knowledge practically in your day-to-day -day life and finally like yoga Vashist had said that self-absorption is only attained by the clarity of the students understanding, right? Okay, I don't even know why we had this uh, satsang uh, because uh, the actual satsang, the gentleman had to go overseas, you see. So this is what destiny is. Uh, what is to be, is to be, you know, and uh, I just had to take this uh, discussion. All right, so now after the mental body, you see, we come to the largest body that we have and this is this blue body around you, which is basically, you know, uh, if it's a tall person from your elbow to your hand, it's approximately 45 centimeters. And so 45 centimeters on this side and 45 on the other, it's 90 centimeters. That's huge. So anyway, it will vary. So that actually is your body of intuition. And the original Sanskrit word for that is the bodhic body. If you look on the top left-hand side, it is actually there. So what is this uh, uh, bodhic body or body of uh, intuition? Basically, it is made up of that material of intuition. And, uh, you, you know, I'll give you proof of this. When suddenly things come to us intuitively, like you may have a problem, you go to sleep in the night, and in the morning without thinking, the answer is there in front of you. That is intuition. Intuition means that the lower bodies, thoughts, feelings, and physical activities not at all involved, straight away that picture actually comes in front of you. 
and you know the way this view actually appears in front of us even as i'm talking and even as you are listening wherever you are sitting there is this view around you can you see that there is no thought feeling or activity in this the view is just there intuitively right so that is actually an action of your body of intuition that is how the view appears i'll give you proof uh, in the end of all this so that's the body of intuition and then last of all, you see, it is a great wonder. It's a great wonder that the majority of the human beings do not know where the spirit is or where the atma is. They say it is within me, but then they say within the physical body. But in the body, there are organs, right? There's the brain, there's the stomach. You see, this body of spirit is not there. Yes, it is correct. It is within you, but it is within your aura. You need to understand this. You are not the physical body, you are this aura. You are all these bodies combined, right? So when you stretch your hands, you see that thing which is there in purple, which is about, say, your hands maybe 10 centimeters or 12 centimeters, doesn't matter. So, you know, this, its actual color is purple. This is basically the body of spirit, or this is the atomic body, right? And what is this atomic body or the body of spirit made of? It is made up of uh, the material, what we call as divine will. You know, we always keep on talking about will. There is a higher will and there is a lower will. Lower will is basically made up of your thoughts, feelings, and your lower activity. But the higher will, which is the will of God, right? Or what you call as the divine will, that is basically what you call as the uh, spirit and keep in mind that so far it has taken 14.3 billion years for us uh, to be what we are as you look at this figure and if I go a little bit deeper into this soon the physical body will dissolve as more and more sensory organs develop we will function from the astral body then the astral body will dissolve and we will function from the mental body then your mental body will dissolve and we will function from the body of intuition. And then finally the body of intuition will also dissolve and we will have a physical body which will function from the level of the spirit. Imagine the human being who is like that. And they say that uh, uh, Jesus Christ was the first one who penetrated into this higher region, which we call as the Vulcan region. And that has opened up the pathway for other human beings to so just just a bit of uh, evolutionary history. So uh, just uh, 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 re-summarizing uh, what I have said, when you stretch your arms, body of spirit, where your hands are, then you come up to your elbow, is the body of intuition, and then where your elbow is, that is the mental body, and then from your elbow uh, coming down to where your shoulders are, basically is the astral body, and then you have the etheric body and then the physical body with which you are very, very familiar. Okay? The physical body is connected to the physical plane. The astral body is connected to the plane of feelings. Your mental body is connected to the plane of thoughts. So your astral body is made up of the material of emotions. See? That is why at the moment we feel the emotions, we don't see them. And then thoughts are even higher than that. If you look at it, thoughts just skim. They come and go, right? We can't catch hold of thoughts. So the thoughts are made, uh, the, your mental body from where the thoughts come is basically made up of a material of thoughts, right? And I've already covered the body of intuition is made up of the material of uh, intuition and your body of spirit is basically made up of divine will. So you see, uh, these are basically the uh, different bodies. Uh, okay, Rajiv Ji, you can take the diagram away. I'll just continue talking. Okay, so, so that was a brief overview of the different bodies. Let's now actually, let, let's first look at the size of these planes, you know. Uh, I, I have discussed this with quite a few spiritual students uh, before. For them, it's uh, not anything new. You know, it would be quite reasonable to say that uh, at least uh, 100 feelings will pass through a human being during the course of a day, right? Or in one hour, 
right? So if 100 feelings pass through one human being and say there are 7 billion human beings, so 7 billion multiplied by 100 feelings each is 700 billion. So your astral plane is 700 billion times bigger than Earth. It is actually huge. And you can actually see that this physical body is one. But how many emotions and how many, you know, feelings and desires pass through us? We are not able to fulfill every single desire, right? Similarly, it will be very fair to say that uh, at least uh, in the course of a single day, at least a thousand thoughts pass through us, right? Many of them actually are not even connected with any feelings, but thoughts just keep on coming. They keep on coming. They keep on coming. So if one human being has a thousand thoughts in a day, then uh, if there are 7 billion human beings, 7 billion multiplied by 1,000 is 7,000 billion. So 7,000 billion times bigger than this physical plane Earth is the mental plane, you see? So there are comparisons actually uh, which can be undertaken. Now, there was another very interesting thing. Uh, I've never actually come across this uh, Rishi Master Vince Arduino had said that, you know, the speed of light which comes from our physical sun is 300,000 kilometers per second, right? 300,000, you multiply it by three is 900,000. Still, you're short of 1 million by 100,000. And, you know, the speed of thought is 15 billion. That is 15,000 million. 750,000 kilometers per second. That is how fast it actually travels. And once uh, I had a spiritual discussion and a lady asked me, what is the proof? You see, the proof actually is this, that if you think of the sun, physical sun, if you think of Saturn, if you think of, say, Saturn having 27 moons, you at once have a mental picture of that. Now, how do you have a mental picture of that? It is because of the speed of thought. 15 million, 750,000 kilometers per second. As you think your thought has actually already reached the physical sun, it has already reached uh, Saturn. And so that is how you have a mental picture of that. And that is standing proof of basically what the Rishi said is actually correct. Keep in mind that they are very high beings and they have studied in the, not the normal universities that we study in. They have studied in spiritual universities from where actually they receive this knowledge. Okay, uh, I seem to be staggering a bit. Now, let us come to the mental body. You see, what happens is that, as I said, that your mental body consists of the upper mental body and the lower mental body, right? Now, this upper mental body is actually pure intellect, right? What do I mean by pure intellect is that it helps us to understand phenomena which is a little bit difficult you see like i put that diagram in front of you and i put in so many examples so uh, this is uh, not uh, very easy to understand so it is this upper mental body that actually is the pure intellect that helps us to understand and rationalize uh, logically complex phenomena just as this particular uh, spiritual discussion we are actually having but then you see, the upper mental body is also called the shining body, you know, in Western terminology. And uh, our Indian sages, they gave it the name Karan Sharira. Karan means cause. So, you know, uh, to give you an example, basically, uh, if you look at a leaf, right, and say that leaf is shining like the sun, right? So this is because it is shining like the sun and like the shape of a love heart or a leaf, that is why it is called the shining body. Now, this is called the causal body as well because this is the cause. You see, this is sitting between your body of intuition and the spirit body, which is your higher nature. And then your lower mental body, astral body, physical body come below it. So it sits right there in the center. And basically, you see, this is where is the, you know, if you go to a library, uh, there are records of all types of books of history, science, whatever. So similarly, if you have heard of the Akasha Chronicle or the Akashic Records, right? So this upper mental body or the shining body is the library or the central memory or the Akasha individual, Akasha 
Akashic records, or this is where all your previous lives, individual previous lives, all your previous events, all your previous thoughts, feelings, everything is actually recorded there, right? So what happens? You see a drop of uh, this uh, uh, upper causal body or uh, what you call as the shining body, it comes out, right? So it travels into the lower mental plane or what you call as uh, where the lower mental body is formed. So this is how your mental body is formed, right? So what do we mean by the mental body? You see, this mental body, basically what it does is it picks up the material which will actually result in your present life and you will have exactly those particular thoughts to which you want to tune to. And look at this. This is actually correct because every human beings, every human being has an individual different mental body and we all think differently. You know, even someone, your mother or your father or your child or husband or wife being so close, they also think differently, right? That is the beauty. So in every life, you create a, a new mental body for yourself. But before this mental body is created is, what happens is that when you leave your upper mental body, you actually see a roadmap. And what this roadmap is, this shows your coming life. You know, it actually gives you a blueprint, like you see the trailer of a movie. It is actually a full movie, which is shown where you will be born, who you will meet, what experiences you will have, and what time you will actually die. So already it is mapped for you, by you. And then the mental body is formed. Now, as soon as this lower mental body is formed, what does the lower mental body do? Basically, it helps us in our day-to-day -day running. For example, uh, I'm giving this uh, particular uh, uh, discussion or talk. So it is helping me to uh, deliver what I want to actually communicate. You know, you want to make a breakfast or lunch or dinner. You want to read a book. Uh, you want to go for a walk. You want to take a bath, whatever. So these activities is basically the function of the lower mental body, right? So by the time the lower mental body is formed, that vision which you saw is has started dissipating or disappearing. Okay, then what happens? You are coming down now to the astral plane. So when you come to the astral plane, you pick up the material, which is actually required. As I explained, the astral plane is huge. You pick up the material for your astral body and the body of feelings, right? And, and look at it. You see, the beauty of this is everyone has a unique astral body. Everyone has got unique feelings, unique emotions, unique desires. You know, whether it is even twins, they also have, uh, you know, a different level of uh, feelings or thoughts flowing in them because they are individuals with their own uh, astral and mental bodies. So now the astral body is formed, right? So uh, just another thing to add here that your body of spirit, you know, when you stretch your arms from your uh, elbow to where your hands are, that is the body of intuition. And then there is that body of spirit. The body of spirit and the body of intuition, they remain unchanged. This is the difference. You see, that is why your higher nature is changeless. And that is what you are trying to do in your spiritual journey. Consciously work from your higher nature rather than working all the time from your uh, lower nature and being a slave of your thoughts and feelings. That's basically uh, the spiritual journey here on earth. Right, and that is why all these higher beings, you know, Ramana Maharishi or Jesus, have actually come to guide us, right, to reduce our misery, misery or our suffering. So these two bodies remain the same in every life; they remain unchanged, and they perform only one function, which we will discuss later. Right now, in the meantime, what is actually happening is that in the womb of that uh, mother, the baby is actually being born. You know. Uh, Gopi Krishna had actually written, and it's very beautiful, actually. He had an uh, enlightened, uh, uh, illuminated Kundalini, actually, which never left him till he died, you know. So Gopi Krishna had made a very beautiful statement that the birth of the baby still eludes the biologist. You know what he meant? What he actually meant was that, you know, that uh, fluid is there uh, in the womb of the mother. So how can the different organs, a brain, 
the eyes, the stomach, the liver. How can all these different organs be formed just out of that fluid, right? Uh, that uh, if this is a, out of that placenta. This is a question, right? Science still doesn't know. Interestingly, Rishi Master Vyan Sarduno has given the answer to this. You see, he calls them rational creatures. If you look at it, your brain perfectly performs its function, what it is doing. Your eyes, they perfectly perform the function of seeing. Your stomach perfectly performs the function of digestion, right? Your heart perfectly performs the function of, you know, uh, pumping blood to your body. So just look at it, actually. These are diverse, very different functions. The brain performs a very different function from the heart or the stomach. So actually, uh, Rishi calls them rational creatures or highly intelligent beings. And also you may call them the beings of light. So basically somewhere out in our universe, what happened was that these entities, they sacrificed their own evolution to serve the human body. So somewhere there is a huge group of heart cells. Somewhere there's a huge group of brain cells. Somewhere out there, there's a huge group of stomach cells. So what happens is that during those nine months, these cells, they come down into the placenta in the physical body. And all that the fluid which is there in the placenta is only just the glue. You see, like consciousness is the glue keeping all the images together. Similarly, the fluid in the placenta is just a glue which actually helps for all these organs to connect. So once all of these have connected into that uh, baby and become a functional unit, that is actually basically how the physical human body with the different organs is actually takes birth, right? There are, uh, I mean, some people have asked very difficult queries as well uh, on this, uh, you know, but uh, uh, I had to take some help, but I was able to answer those. Now, what happens is that, uh, you see, the moment this uh, water breathing baby, which is there in the uh, placenta, for the womb of the mother, the moment it actually comes out and becomes an air-breathing baby, right at that time, your astral body, mental body, bodic and atmic bodies lock into that physical body. And that is basically how the aura that we were actually talking about and that picture, you know, I'm very grateful to uh, Michael Ivanhoe and Rishi Master Vyans Arduno because they actually helped in the formulation of that uh, diagram right though it is given in so many places and there is so much actually talked about but that's a very simple clear picture of basically who we are so now your life starts on the physical plane right and basically whatever you have uh, decided whatever karma you have decided to play out for yourself that's basically what you undertake while uh, uh, carrying on with your physical body now, one thing is actually very interesting. You see, they say that the time of birth and the time of death is determined. That is actually correct, right? But how is the time of actually death determined? It's not simply just determined by you that I will live for 80 years. You know, it is, it is actually a consensus between all these different organs and yourself that say the heart says that I'll serve only for 79 years and nine months. And the stomach says, I will serve for 79 years. So there's a consensus and they say, okay, uh, the heart says, I will serve for 79 years and five months and then I will leave. You see, medically they say, for oh, the person had a brain failure, or the person had a heart failure. That is not the case. What happens is that those heart cells, when they say you had a heart attack or a brain failure, those brain cells break away and they return back from where they have actually come, only the physical part of that cells remains in the brain, which goes back to Mother Earth, right? Whether it's buried or it is burnt. So this is actually how death takes place. Now, you see, it's very interesting that as time will go on, just like you can see me communicating to you, similarly, this knowledge and how it actually takes place will be seen by all of you, right? Okay. So uh, moving on, you carry out all your physical activities. Everything you do on the physical plane is from your perspective, from how you feel, how you think, and that is how you carry on. Then actually what happens is that the physical death takes place, right? Now, when the physical death takes place, there's a uh, period of transition, and then you enter into your 
mental, uh, sorry, your astral body, right? So now you are born in the plane of desires. Now, this is quite interesting. While you were actually on the physical plane, what was actually happening is that you were doing everything from your perspective, whatever your emotions and whatever your feelings were, but you didn't take the emotions or the feelings or the desires of the person you were interacting with. You know, an example is uh, given, say, uh, you feel that this person is very ugly and you laugh at that person and that person actually suddenly notices that you are laughing because he, you know, he, because you think that he's ugly, he or she is ugly. So the thing is this, he'll really feel pretty bad about it, isn't it? So what happens is that in the astral plane, now your astral body experiences and goes through all the feelings from the perspective of the other people that you met, whether they laughed or they suffered or they were actually happy. And what happens is, you see, now you have the full picture in front of you, how you felt and what were the feelings of the others. So naturally in this, if you have slapped someone, you have hurt someone, you will feel bad about it, but it's too late. You can't actually now uh, return uh, that same uh, activity with a, uh, with a loving feeling to the other person because you have left the physical plane. And this is the reason why we return back again and again. Right? That is why, you know, in our WhatsApp group and everywhere, I keep on talking about unconditional love, right? You actually have to raise yourself to your higher nature and you have to have that unconditional love towards all beings, towards all entities, and you've got to be observer to all that, just like your higher nature is. Otherwise, there is no escape, you know? Otherwise, the cycle continues. All right. Then your life finishes on the astral plane. The astral body dies, uh, you know, and then you go on into your lower mental body. Now, in the lower mental body, it's, look, it's just purely a cocoon of mental material. So here, there are some examples uh, which are given. Uh, say you wanted your son uh, to be an engineer and you wanted him to study in, say, Oxford uh, University and you wanted him to work in London, but unfortunately that didn't happen, right? So what happens is you will create that family, you will create London, you will create Oxford, right? You will have your son, your son will go to study in Oxford, and then he will work as an engineer in London. So basically, what could not be fulfilled in the lower regions is actually fulfilled there. And then whatever experiences that you have gained or gathered, now finally that drop returns back to the causal body, and the causal body is enriched by the experiences of uh, this particular life. So this is what happens. Every time you come down, you collect the experiences of the lower planes, the physical, the astral, the lower mental, and your uh, lower uh, upper mental body continues to grow richer and richer. So that basically is the uh, cycle of reincarnation as we have only about an hour, you know, there's quite a lot uh, which can be discussed just very briefly. See, it is all changing. What happens is that the time which takes for the zodiac sign to change is uh, 2,160 years. That is at present, right? Before, during the Atlantean period or the Lumerian period in our evolution, it was different. And as we are progressing into the sixth, seventh uh, subroot races, uh, this time will again change. But at present, it's 2,160 years. And we go through three cycles of reincarnation, each being roughly about uh, 700 years on Earth. So we spend about between 60 to 80 years on Earth, and we spend about 300 years of that Earth life in the astral plane, and we spend about roughly 200 years in the mental plane, and then we are actually reborn. And uh, this is quite interesting that, uh, you know, they say that there's a male in every female, and there's a female in every male, what you call Shiva and Shakti, uh, right? The yin and the yang. So they say three lifetimes we are born as a male, and then three lifetimes we are born as a female, and so we experience both of these sites. So it's quite interesting and quite deep. But summarizing, the point that I want to make is that I want you to understand and open up this blueprint, which is already there in your subconscious, right? This is not anything new that I'm actually telling you. And as I'm speaking about it, you can see 
that it doesn't come as a surprise. You seem to be quite familiar with basically what I have discussed. Okay, just before we close, let's uh, give you an example of the proof of the existence of these different planes and these uh, different bodies. So uh, wherever you are actually sitting, you know, there are images all around you. So you can actually pick any image. Uh, I'll take an example. I just uh, say, I've got this uh, book, uh, uh, Practicing Who Am I? And there is this picture of Anam uh, Namahari uh, here, right? So you see, the view is always there in front of you, correct? You can never deny that right from childhood till now, whether you're awake or you're in dreams or you're in deep sleep. In deep sleep, there is the view of darkness, right? So how does this view appear without thought or feeling? The view, this view actually appears in front of you because you see the divine will from your atomic body, where your hands are, look, we are going from outside to inside, the divine will acts on the intuition of your body of intuition, right? So divine will acts on the body of intuition, and that is how intuitively, this is a function of your higher nature, this is how intuitively, without thought, without feeling, without physical activity, the view appears. And this is the proof of the existence of your body of spirit and body of intuition, because you can't deny the appearance of the view in front of you intuitively, right? Then what happens? In this view, we pick up objects. Say, for example, I'm looking at this. So if I ask the question, what is this? Then I'll say that it is a book. You see, that is a thought. It's a book. Uh, whose book it is? Uh, it is about Ramana Maharishi. That's another thought which actually flows, right? So now uh, that is your mental body, which is active, right? Now, if I say to myself, oh, well, do I actually like the color of this book, the cover of this book? Do I like Ramana Maharishi? Of course, I like the color of the book. Uh, you know, I like the uh, picture on the book. And naturally, I have a lot of reverence. I do like uh, and have very reverent uh, feelings towards Ramana Maharishi, who is actually my uh, Satguru. So you see, these are emotions now. So after the thought, this is a book. Now the feelings are flowing. So your astral body is actually active. But now if I say that suddenly if there was a snake here with, uh, you know, black spots instead of this book, naturally that and I'm holding the snake in my hand, nobody will like that, isn't it? So see, that's another feeling opposite to liking, that's a disliking. And then what happens? Where am I actually conducting this uh, spiritual meeting? Where am I holding this book in my hands with reference to my physical body? So all this activity is taking place on this physical plane. So you see, this is what is constantly happening. The view appears because of your body of spirit and body of intuition, and they remain unchanged. And then you pick up objects, thoughts flow into you, your mental body becomes active. Then you develop feelings towards that. That is how the ego or the personality acts. You see, it has a liking or a disliking towards uh, certain objects. And based on that, physical activity takes place here on the physical plane. So that is the proof of the existence of these uh, different planes of creation and these uh, different uh, physical bodies. So uh, I think uh, I have said enough. We you know, covered almost an hour. I'll just keep on going for another hour. Uh, we will close this uh, discussion here. And uh, with this, uh, I'm... Uh, Thank you to all of you for having taken the time uh, to attend. And we will continue uh, with our satsang uh, uh, second week of uh, next month. So once again, uh, thank you for being patient and uh, listening to this very deep uh, discourse.